Repeat that piece. It's very yes, important. <laughs> very important. Okay, well, I think what I said was um, I failed to ask Dave for a bio to do a proper introduction. So um, hopefully Dave will cover his, his bio when he starts speaking. I expect we're going to give a couple more minutes to see who else arrives. I believe Bill O'Reilly had a wonderful memified statement that fits this, uh, this event. But in the interest of keeping things clean, I will not mention the specifics of that comment. <laughs> All right. I got my keybind sorted out. You are okay. live, sir. Yes. Um, actually, I do want to start off saying to everybody, welcome to the USN Discord channel and Feel free to poke around in the various channels and stuff and stay for a while if you want. Take your EVA suit off and stay a while. We promise we only vent at mo three, four times a day tops. I figured this talk will be somewhat interactive, so I imagine people will chime in along the way. Nice. Yeah, you can either you can either speak up or you can type it into the presentation media text channel just above the uh, audio channel here. Text channel presentations media will be on stream and on the video. So nothing will be lost in using typing instead of audio. I can say something. Cool. Just wanted to see if anyone was live, or if my headset was going bad. Thank no, your you. headset's good. Uh, we're waiting a few minutes for uh, a couple people. Sleep. Perhaps we can as we're waiting, talk about how we decided to do this. We were randomly talking in general while waiting for a game to start. Um, and you had some really awesome ideas and about how you were running your Artemis. And I thought that that should be shared with everybody. And you kindly said, okay. <laughs> Yes, it was between you, myself, Yui, and I believe Bubba. Yeah. And uh, uh, awesome enough, well, we have actually a couple of the senior officers from the Canadian fleet here in the channel, as I can see. Welcome. Hello. Welcome, Canada. Yeah, I hear great things about your Canada group. We try.
So we'll wait, what, another minute? Yeah, or I don't know, we could, we could go ahead and get started too. Yeah, we were one day sitting around waiting for a game to start and I believe Baba said uh, he was doing a con and uh, he was enjoyed doing it, but it was a lot of work and I believe Greybeard uh, in the past has also talked about that. I don't see him here, but uh, it's it's a lot of work to load up all your computers and go out to a con, set it all up, run it all day, and then take it all down and take it home. If it's a one-day event, if it's a whole weekend event, then you could find yourself there for two to three days. And so those are the things that we were talking about on the chat um, in between games. and. Uh, we were talking, I was talking about how uh, in Canada, we were able to come up with a pretty good plan where we were going out to cons and uh, they were inviting us out and uh, compensating us to a certain degree. So, and uh, I believe uh, Bubba was pretty jealous as he indicated. Uh, he's not here, is he? He was. was. He, he was. I'm sure you'll have something to say. So I, I believe that's how it all started. So I started talking about what we did uh, in Canada uh, to get Artemis together. So here we are. So I guess the topics I will be covering is defining your values as an organization and how you can build community around that. And in the end, you you will eventually get to a point where you're you're operating with a pretty good crew to play Artemis with on a regular basis. Uh, I invite people to ask questions along the way as I go through, because it just feels like I'm talking straight into a computer and I'm like a real presentation. I, can see, I can't see faces. Can you give a brief background on business versus just fun and your terminology? Oh, yes. Um, my, my expectations um, of any social group when I'm operating is that there is a business component to it. Uh, to what level of the business component is really up to you, but we, you, you should be aware that it is, it is a part of operating. Uh, without that, uh, the, your group or your social group or your organization won't have a, uh, what we call a sustainable uh, plan, meaning it can operate beyond uh, what you're doing uh, into, uh, I would say, into a, a life of its own. So that is the business side. The social side I've seen is that a lot of people, and this happens in board game communities too, where a bunch of folks get together and play board games and uh, they want to share it with everybody. D&D, uh, &D, for instance, uh, we, we all end up getting together playing and then we want to share it but we don't get past our, our living rooms or our basements. So that's what I see from a social perspective. Dave, please hold. We appear to have an audio issue. Oh, okay. I'll stand by. Am I not coming through? Well, yeah, keep talking for a few minutes. Okay. Um, Somebody typed and uh, they said they can't hear, so I don't know if they've got an audio issue if they're on. Am I coming through to you, Slate? Yes, you are, loud and clear. All right, I continue to talk. Yeah, I keep talking for a couple minutes, see if we can get Nosy Nick to be able to hear you. Sure. Um, Nosy Nick is part of the First Light Division in Canada, and uh, I'm happy to see him on there. So I guess I'll just do my bio while we're doing, while we're trying to sort out our audio issue Excellent here. Excellent idea. Uh, I am part of the TSN Canadian fleet up here in Canada. I, my, my role or my position in the fleet is Commander David, no, Commodore David Trin. And there are three divisions in Canada at the moment, official divisions that we've commissioned. And I've been running Artemis for a little bit over five years. And it started off with a first division. And up to this point in time, we have three divisions. Uh, probably about 
I think 70 or 80 miles apart from one another. So uh, we're all within driving distance. So that's kind of the background of uh, myself uh, growing a community five years ago uh, into what it is today. And you guys are probably you guys probably hear rumblings and Facebook updates uh, on the fa on the groups uh, of what we're doing up here. And those who've talked to me at conventions and Armada, uh, I've given you some insight. So that's kind of my background in terms of the Artemis world. Uh, what else is there? Uh, in my spare time, I like to go social swing dancing and play jazz music, long walks on the beaches, you know. Yeah, is that a clarinet you play or is that what other instruments? Yeah, it's a clarinet. As I see a future future presentation is Dave playing his clarinet for us. <laughs> uh, sure, if you guys want to. The the Canadian Light Division jazz band. Yeah. Anything is possible. Okay, so we have a go for a continue on the presentation. Oh, perfect. Okay. So uh, the very first thing I want to do is I want every uh, person in, uh, in who's participating or who's listening to think about some of the of your own personal values as a, as a person who operates day to day. Um, these, are, these are values that basically you make decisions around and it's based on certain beliefs that you have. Um, what you're trying to do is try, you're trying to find a bunch of people with the same values. To, and with those values, you want to try to get it written down so that you all agree that this is how you want to operate. So I know, I know the presentation title is how to make money. <laughs> um, uh, would that be, would that be similar to USN's? We prefer a family friendly game here with no, you know, profanity and, you know, harsh, whatever. Yes. Yes. That would be and defining, Defining your values as a group is really important because once you have that, everyone agrees to operate that uh, day to day like that and to behave that way too. And we all check in with one or, one another. So you know, if someone starts you know using curse words on Discord, we're gonna say, hey, hey, we got to keep this you know somewhat uh, you know PG rated. I will say that the Eastern Front group has been pretty lucky on that. We've with what about 260 people on the Facebook page and we've had no issues over the past two years. And that type of value, I don't, I don't know. I think you write it, you wrote it down pirate Lord on the um, Facebook. As group. far as, as far as on the Facebook group itself, you've written down some of the kind of the principles or the values of how you want to see people oh, interact yeah, with one yeah. another. And, yeah, and one, maybe once every three or four months, I put a little post saying, hey, our general is be nice, play nice. And, you know, yeah, I don't care if you're a rookie or we've been playing this as long as I have, which is only about a year or two longer than you have. Um, every, like in the USN in, in general, you know, um, keep it friendly and let's have some fun. Yeah, so those values basically will guide um, the perspective of every member who's who's on there um, to you know work within those rules. So I'm glad you do that, and it basically it defines a culture. And I like talking a lot about culture. Also, um, I'm seeing a lot of messages come through. <laughs> I'm just gonna put a image, a slide or whatever onto this. I uh, jumped on the internet and saw some samples of culture definitions. So this is one example of what culture is to for a company, just a random company I found out there. I don't know if it Texas shows up all right. Small. If you yeah. cl if you click on it and down at the bottom left, I think at least on mine, it says open original. If you click on the open original, you should be able to see it. Yeah, it just opened up for me too. 
it opens into a web browser. browser. Into a browser, so that's not coming up on my recording. I'll see if I can implement that another way. I'll have uh, all these images, these slide or these pictures and everything available for upload. Okay, I will so this... label them as slide numbers and put them in the video description. All right. Um, this particular company, regardless of what they are, they they talk about their their values and um, not only that, but they if you see the little circle diagram, uh, culture wraps around the values, and that's another thing that I like to dive into uh, when you're trying to create your community of Artemis players. Once you've defined your values, uh, you really want to take a look at the culture and how you want to live uh, your your day to day and how you interact with one another. I'm not going to read the, all the text in there, but it gives me a, gives you guys a chance to to look over it and then ask questions or make a comment along the way. But it's important to set your culture as early as you can uh, when you're starting a group, so that people know what to expect and how to behave. Do you publish that somewhere for your group? Yeah, we. Um, Every division in in the TSN Canada is required uh, at the end at the beginning of every year to create a what we call a business plan or a strategic plan. And my job as a commodore is to ensure that uh, it's written down and uh, that the groups follow it. So, but for the most part, if you want to be a part of TSN Canada, we have some pretty hard rules on that. Is that you set your you agree to the values that uh, we set. Uh, as a as a fleet, let me see if I can grab that for you guys. So TSN Canada. Uh, values are inclusiveness, having fun, being safe, open to learning and sharing skills and ideas and geeking out. So what you'll find along a lot of these groups is that everyone really is trying to do the same thing and you'll see values uh, come up to be very similar across the board. What process did you go to get to those values as a group and how many were involved in that process? Well, when I, when I started playing Artemis the very first couple of weeks, um, I just thought of them myself because <laughs> no one else, I think we had four players that basically four of my friends, I called them over and I said, Hey, that's play. And they're like, all right. Uh, we, and I know all these folks share the same values, like personal values as myself. So when I went and when I sat down and said, Hey, um, these are the things I value when I want to have a social gaming group. And I wrote these down. Gotcha. Now there is a toolkit out there. Um, it's, you, you can find it under like business planning. Um, I can see if I can find a, a link for you. No, that was, I was just curious that that's sufficient, but thank you. Yes. So, uh, community building, business strategy, planning, those keywords, uh, Google will give you tons of resources. Dave, you had just helped us facilitate our uh, strategic plan over at second division, which we're going to our second stage of. That's right. Yeah. So what I do too, is, uh, I, I go to each community or each city and sit with them and just guide them through a process. Uh, so facilitating uh, the development of a strategic plan. Um, Do you charge for that? Uh, yeah, I charge, uh, you know, um, you have to play Artemis with me. Fair enough. I had the privilege of playing with him uh, this past weekend. Um, and Adam Perra, who is not here um at the beta test party yeah that was a lot of fun so once you've defined your values as a community it's uh it is important that you live it every day and you practice it because there's nothing worse than being a hypocrite and doing the opposite now of course there's always once in a while there's exceptions but those are that's not the norm
So once we have our values set, we look at culture. Did I say that to me? <laughs> Kami Unity? No, I'm just making word puns. It's my job. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Let me grab another slide here. Hey Dave, how did you uh, how did you get first involved with Artemis? What was your first experience? Um, my friend from Malaysia sent me a message saying, "This game is for you, Dave. Uh, I know it's a good fit." Not thinking any more than I would enjoy it because, uh, like many of you, I'm a Star Trek fan, but also a science fiction fan. So uh, I jumped on and downloaded the demo and started playing it and watched some YouTube videos and. Uh, that's how it all started. And then I bought the game, uh, emailed my friends and told them they have to come over. Sounds familiar probably with a lot of you guys too. Yes, it, at least with me anyway. And then from there, I believe we played once a week, every Friday. And uh, I was out there recruiting um, as many people to come out and play. So we played for about three, four hours <laughs> from nine o'clock to about one o'clock every Friday night. So what do you mean when you say the word culture? Well, I just uploaded a, a image, which I, I was reading uh, as a sample. Culture is basically a way of us uh, describing ourselves or expressing ourselves. For instance, some people express themselves by playing music. Uh, some people express themselves by uh, drawing, for instance. Uh, all that is part of culture. Uh, there is no specific medium in terms of how one person can express themselves. Go ahead and take a look at the slide. So that is the business side. The social side I've seen is that a lot of people, and this happens in board game communities too, where a bunch of folks get together and play board games and uh, they want to share it with everybody. Uh, D and D, for instance. So once you've defined your values uh, we, and you, you have a culture, getting together, place, playing. In, in and the case of art and sharing, the culture is really don't get past um, our, our living rooms or our basements. How we play the game. So that's what I see. What's from acceptable? Us. What's not, not acceptable? Um, I know we use language, for instance, as as a way of expressing ourselves. Um, and whether or not we shoot. And uh, defining protocols too. Operating procedure, standard operating procedure, is a culture. Do we have that as part of our community? And we do. I mean, uh, those who play on the TSN over in UK, there's a culture there. And there's a culture in the, uh, the Eastern Front. As well as the USN. Yes, that's right. And there's, uh, so anywhere yeah. that I've gone to play Artemis, there's cultures, there's un, almost like unspoken rules uh, when you get there and how you should behave and how you interact with one another. Not it. Really and, and, the, and the rookies are captains. <laughs> yes, that's actually a really nice way of implementing. And that, I think, connects to the values of inclusion. It seems to be, at least with Eastern Front, we found that uh, new people come out uh, we don't really tell them. <laughs> we we just tell like we don't tell them until we actually start the game that they they are captain, usually on the first on the first go. So that is a culture. So it's important to define those cultures. Uh, file, you uh, said something there. I we missed that. Can you check your mic? I've also Better. cranked him up locally. It's still pretty quiet there. File. When in doubt, Hello? there you go. 
Okay, I hope this isn't what I actually need because I literally put the mic in my mouth that time. We can hear you loud and clear now. Kind of need it, but you're good here. Proceed. Um, I, I, I like this example. You know, the chair is culture. And um, it's funny because, you know, the type of chair defines a lot of things about, you know, your economic status. But I mean, also in the Star, in the Star Trek or the Artemis world, you know, to be in the chair is part of the culture. It's an important role, a responsible role of being a captain, for instance. said it best die <laughs> I don't think you made it onto the recording repeat your wharf comment I said uh, lieutenant wharf said it best comfortable chair mm -hmm. So, that's the real reason. That's the only real reason to be captain. You get the best chair. <laughs> so I make. Sure, I just make sure. I'm, I want everyone to make sure when you're defining your values, it will have an effect on your culture and how how you set it. Will uh, will set the course of like it's it's going to be how you guys operate for the rest of time, at least with that organization or that group, and making sure that the the values align with all the community members that are a part of it. So hopefully I, uh, that makes sense in terms of how culture uh, kind of wraps around the values. Because we've had a lot of cultures around this game. We've had the very casual, loose knit, barely, the captain barely has any control all the way up to military simulationist, if you are not given an order, you are not supposed to do something, even to the detriment of uh, the mission. Yes, and those those leaders are the ones that define that culture. And they're not wrong. Uh, they're not right. It's just the people who want to operate in that in that organization has agreed to do that. So if you're creating your own community, think about you know what is it that you you want out of all of this. So goal setting comes uh, as the next part. I've I've flown under other captains that have tried to micromanage, and that totally works for their style. You know, where they tell the helm to do this, you know, exactly when to make the turns and stuff like that. Um, I tend to be a little looser. I'd basically just say, "Get me there." Or I don't care how you get me there. You know, I try to make it a little bit funner. Um, or a little less rigid. Maybe that's a term I want to go for. Yeah, and that's your style, uh, your captain style, which affects the culture of those on the bridge and those who are watching. So goal setting is the next thing. Here's the next slide. Uh, every, in terms of scoping, I usually set goals for one year. And if uh, if you're setting goals, you want to make sure that you use what we call the SMART uh, principles. So goals need to be uh, specific, significant, and um, I guess malleable. Uh, your goals should be measurable, meaningful, and uh, motivational. And measurable doesn't have to be uh, qualitative, it could be quantitative too. Uh, making sure that the goals are agreed upon by, for the most part, the senior senior team, and that it's also attainable and can be achieved within, say, a one year scope. Uh, it's acceptable and uh, it fits within your values. You can't really make goals that are outside of your values. And the most important one, I think, is time-based, making sure that you scope your time so that it's it's not outside of making it accessible and realistic. Um, it needs to be timely, and you need to be able to track it. So um, if we look at the three pieces, you need to set your values as a community uh, with a group, and then all agree upon it, sign off on it. And that, therefore, will affect your culture. And once you have that, then you start setting your goals. 
uh, say for one year or six months, whatever, doesn't matter. And then from that point uh, forward, th this is the fun part where you get to, uh, uh, once, you, once you combine everything, um, you are then able to come up with strategies and ideas on meeting those goals. And that is where I think for us, cons came in. Um, in Canada, we found that after five years, we, um, we, we realized that one person can't be buying and maintaining all the computer equipment, network, tables and chairs and spending all the money to go to cons. So uh, we came up with a strategy for what we call a cost recovery uh, financial part. Uh, once we came up with a number that uh, we knew that was uh, realistic and attainable based on the smart, um, the smart uh, ideas, uh, we were able to reach out to the cons when they asked us to, to come and uh, and make sure Artemis was available to say, uh, we have a financial strategy where we're looking to recover our costs for operating. Are you okay with X number of dollars? And uh, we found that they were more than uh, happy to accommodate that. So if you explain it correctly to the people you want money from, they they are more likely to give you money. That's correct, yeah. So we combine the culture, our social interactions with one another, which is the values that we set, uh, and the finances. Uh, these are all the key ingredients uh, to share, uh, not only be, to be transparent with all the members who are participating, but also to the convention uh, organizers so that they understand that, you know, you're really trying to not lose money, <laughs> lots of money. Do you find a uh, better response if there is a lump sum to you or whether you charge per ticket for the person that plays? Well, that comes back to the values and the culture of your community and the strategy. Uh, in Canada, we are very social, um, like for, uh, from a, a socialism perspective. Uh, compared to say to the United States, we found that uh, if we used the word honorarium, that seemed to go over very, very well instead of we charge this fee. So uh, we asked for basically a lump sum uh, as an honorarium to cover our uh, our operating costs. And approximately how much do you charge? Can, can I ask that? Uh, for the... Uh, for the cons, we charged uh, two hundred and thirty dollars uh, for one day of of uh, making Artemis available at a con. What does that cover for you all? That covers transportation to the cons from for all three divisions. So their one car can make it out to the cons. All the cons are within, I'd say, sixty to ninety miles of one another. So um, there's one that's about one hundred and twenty miles. Uh, from one from one of our cities, but nonetheless, it kind of rounds itself out. Um, it also covers the cost replacement of our hardware that we've been buying and maintaining. And I'm hoping that we can, as a like a third uh, objective, is to start having a capital account so that there's some money to to invest into some more development. But that hasn't made it into the goals of 2017. That's for 2018. Do you have a lot of specialized um, DMX controls that go with your bridge? Uh, we use the Open DMX by Entech, and we have a what we call a Yorkville, it's a Yorkville light bar used for, uh, I would say, for DJs and all that, that sits on a stand. And so when you... When you talk to the convention people and say what you're bringing, do you have like a picture or a website or something? You say, hey, this is what I can bring. Yeah, we have a like a presentation package and uh, you know, Captain John Scales, uh, you know, he's, he did actually a walkthrough, uh, one of the videos that we have on uh, Facebook to present to them and that usually sells it. So there's an advertising um, overhead too. Uh, yes, uh, if you want to look at expenses from that perspective. Uh, the video cost us nothing to make because we just walked around with our phone. But if you want to talk about expenses in terms of like website and uh, what else do we have? 
there's a couple of minor expenses. I mean, I would have to look at the ledger to be to like give you line items on each one. But. What would you say all of the pieces are kind of like in a, in a stack? Like you have to have gear, you have to have this presentation to be able to give to the convention people. What what other things do you need to have? Uh, ideally, you have a website um, for sure. We have uh, posters and we have sticky items we can stick on the door so that people can find us. I think one of the want... is the biggest one. And do you print print um, uh, badges and stuff to sell? Uh, yeah, that's we're preparing our 2018 strategic plan where the goals in there will be to sell badges. So I think some of you who are on Facebook uh, with the TSN Canada groups, you're, you're starting to probably to see a patches become available. And uh, we're hoping to sell them and use the money to help uh, with the cost recovery. How many people on your core team that arranges all of this? We have two for the third light division who are the senior officers. I believe five with the second light division. Uh, Captain Scales should be able to confirm that. And with the first division, there are three of us. How often do you get together to meet to discuss things? We do a lot of informal chats and emails with one another. And uh, in two weeks' time, we get together for our first fleet division training, where we first division is hosting uh, second and light, third light division to uh, get them uh, up to speed on you know uh, fleet maneuvers and just training, hardcore game training, <laughs> Artemis training. Uh, there we also we'll be doing like a review of strategic plan and the goals for 2018. So I imagine once a year where we actually sit down at a table and sort that out, but we see each other at cons because we all are attending them together as a fleet. Yeah, we have bookings right up right now to I think April, end of April for, for attending cons. Are you bringing stuff to the Armada? We haven't talked about Armada yet, so I'm hoping that will be on the agenda item uh, in two weeks' time when all three, uh, when all the captains are, are together. If you guys come as ragtag, you're ragtag to Armada. You're more than welcome to jump in on the pirate bridge of the Eastern Front. Ah, thank you. So um, not to keep this all going all night, but I wanted to say that basically when we combine the culture, the social interaction, the finances, and the and take into account the environment, these are all the keys I believe that uh, allows you to have a have goals to you know reach uh, that you could reach uh, based on what each one of your each one group each one of the group wants to do. So, but you guys are the ones that define your own goals and success. Um, when I learned how to do this a long time ago, I wish uh, the public school system would have given me this option where, you know, I could define what my passing grade was. Hmm. So really you're doing this for yourselves. There is no wrong uh, along the way, so if your measurables of success, if if you come six months into a one year operation and you're, you, it doesn't look like you're gonna hit it, you can adjust your measurables of success and lower your numbers or all that. So that's uh, I think one thing that needs to be understood that once you set this, it's not in stone. All it is, is just milestones that everyone is aware of and you're always trying to achieve it. I'll post uh, another image. So you need to consider these four elements when creating an Artemis community um, so that you can define what success is, get your goals in place and then off you go. I didn't touch on environmental. Um, 
as much as I did with the economic and the social and the culture. Uh, environmental is something that uh, should be considered in terms of the amount of hardware that we push through, uh, making sure that we don't throw the electronics into the garbage, that we take it to a recycling facility so that the parts can be reused in, in a way that doesn't uh, continue to damage our, our earth, our mother earth. So that's part of, uh, part of operating a, I would say, a sustainable organization is to be aware of our environment. Do you bring a lot of backup gear just in case? Um, no. <laughs> I think the only time that we got caught was one of our projector bulbs flew out, but the con had an extra one. So we requested a projector, an extra projector, in a sense. So they had it, and we used it. It was, our, I think, our last con at Forest City Comic Con. And those projector bulb light, light bulbs are pretty expensive. <laughs> they are. Yeah, I think. Does anybody else have any questions? I think at the last Armada, um, we had one of our laptops go down, but we had a spare laptop. So yeah, having a backup definitely helps in situations like that. So these are the four pillars of developing your community. And from there, you should be able to set a pretty good target in terms of if you want to start charging money for running Artemis at conventions. How um, immersed do you get? To, does the crew, uh, the folks from the TSN Canada, do they all dress up? Do they have uniforms? Do you have banners or backdrops? Uh, those sorts of things. We have all of that in the works. I'm very proud and happy to say that uh, Captain Scales of the 2nd Light Division and Tyler from the 3rd Light Division have been working really, really hard in getting our uniforms all coordinated and set. Um, there's even a SOP guideline in terms of how we are to wear our uniform uh, when we're out uh, out at uh, cons, etc. So that's all in the works at the moment. And I believe we should be probably good to go in November or December. Um, you would probably be in full uniform as late as January. Very cool. Uh, right now, our goal is to have uniforms for the December 10th Shakedown for 3rd Division, and I am currently sewing patches on uniforms right now. Nice. Dedication. Dedication. So the, the crew has been very enthusiastic. Um, in Canada, because I, I feel that once we set up the framework and set our values, people knew what they needed that they could do without upsetting anybody. And um, and they always a they felt they could always ask questions if they weren't sure. So, and that was really important to how we operated. Yeah, I think I covered almost everything um, based on the presentation description. If um, yeah, quick and quick question for um, tax purposes: Do you have to worry about taxes? Are you running as a business, or is it just kind of a we're just running as we go? I am running um, the first division as a business. It's a, a computer consulting business to the CRA. Um, I'm a software developer by day, and uh, part of all, basically all of it is a tax write-off by the end of the day or end of the year. So it part of it is making sure you follow your country's laws in terms of uh, expenses and revenue and all that stuff, and everything's got invoices and receipts, etc. So at the end of the year, I do claim all the revenue and all the expenses. Do we have other questions? Uh, given the size of the group, how many bridges can you operate at a single convention? It sounds like you've got uh, potential for uh, three or four there. When we go to cons, we 
I'll tell you something. Over the last five years, we found we've burned ourselves out a couple times at doing conventions, especially the two three-day ones when we're just getting masses and masses of people. Uh, we, we've only been running one bridge. Occasionally, we've run two. Um, up to this point in time, we revamped our Artemis presentation where we were putting, uh, when Tom had introduced the fighters and the fighter bay, we've been putting people through uh, as fighter pilots. And so our our stick right now is uh, selling the idea of cadets uh, joining uh, TSN Academy to learn how to fly uh, fighter jets. Uh, not to say that well, those who come along and want to operate on the bridge, uh, they can. Uh, we just don't put emphasis on full bridge operation at the moment. So that's how we're doing cons at the moment, uh, just to take the load off of our officers who are operating all day. After you do this for a few years, you'll find that it wears on you. With uh, second division at Com Bravo last year, we ran uh, two full bridges, and we were running from uh, 10 a.m. to almost two in the morning at some points. That's about the same schedule uh, my team was running at Dragon Con this past year. Uh, four-day weekend convention. We had over 64 missions and 500 players on one one bridge um, with uh, dreadnought configuration and two fighters. It was it was exhausting, but very profitable. Yeah, and if the goals are set to to hit a certain target and profit, then uh, you know that's that's wonderful. Uh, making sure that your goals are set. So that you hit those numbers uh, is, I think, it's all part of operating your own community. So we're coming up on just about an hour. Are there any other questions? I think from what I understand everyone wants to know how they want to they want to create their own communities your know, respective communities in their cities or towns so that people come out and play this game and uh, this roadmap that i've uh, presented is the standard uh, business plan that m those who attend say mba uh, school or get their mba would uh, would be familiar with and those who want to want to do something like that um, i'm sure somebody in your community uh, can also uh, guide you through in addition to uh, having access to myself and others online. Standard, uh, I would say this would be standard business planning. Do you do anything extra to put the players in the seats at cons? When you say do anything extra, um, like other than just put your game in the list of games at the con. Do you work the crowd? <laughs> we uh, we usually have um, uh, like a, a briefing area where somebody, somebody walks them through how to fly the fighters, but that's about it. So like a staff sergeant, I would say. But nothing, nothing like theatrical. I think that's what you're trying to ask. I, I've just been going to a lot of events where there's just no interest in my game. Of course, that's some of the events that I'm choosing are that way already. But the other ones, it, it's just if the program doesn't tell you exactly what it is or get people to the seats, I'm just wondering how, how you go about doing that. You're one of a thousand things at a con. How do you get people to your event? Um, I guess for us, we recognize that there are a thousand things happening and there's spikes and lulls throughout the day. And uh, we welcome the lulls where we can rest a little bit. Because <laughs> we've had that where for an hour, some panel was going and everybody was at the panel. So we we're like, okay, well, let's take a, you know, a half hour, 45 minute break. So I've, I think I've noticed it at some at most conventions that if they if 
it's it's a crowd mentality. If people see something happening, that are curious and they want to check it out. So um, when I introduced a board game years ago, I just had people standing by and and just say, let's just sit here and start playing. I'm not charging you to play the game. I just want to show people how to play. And passerbys would suddenly come in and watch and say, ooh, cool, what is this? And that's how it just kind of like would snowball. And suddenly it's six hours later and I've run half a dozen games. Second Div has also done things where one of us has wandered out into the con itself and been like, and spotted people just standing around and being like, hey, want to come try a computer game? It's really fun. Come on, join us. And just sort of gone around and round it, rounded up any willing volunteers to just sort of pull them into the games. We also noticed a lot of uh, cons are starting to have their own apps that you can download on your phone so i try very hard to stay busy posting stuff on those apps and actually trish who just spoke is now our communications officer at second leg division so she'll be taking over a lot of those responsibilities so we have someone dedicated to always being a social media presence during cons So setting those goals in your plan in terms of what you want to get out of a con, for instance, will give everyone a chance to come up with these wonderful ideas to execute. Um, so hopefully that answers your question there, Baba. All right, thank you. Find people to play with is, I think, part of it. And taking a team of people with you to help you run the uh, bridge. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. I assume you're running it on your own there, Bubba? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So building building your community based on the values uh, in recruiting is really important. Having at least two or three people who are part of your senior team making decisions uh, really takes the load off of one person. They've certainly oh, given us lots of stuff to, uh, to think about and, and ponder. Well, I credit my team. I mean, uh, without them, I don't think we would have grown this fast and this far and gone, come this far uh, with uh, even with additional uh, divisions kind of hinting or talking to me about starting up and joint and getting commissioned into TSN Canada. Um, you know, some are hesitant and some are ready to go. So. Uh, I think it's important that you know getting your your values written out and telling people and being really transparent about this is how I would like to operate Artemis in this community. You guys, yes. are you guys in or not? And so you have people coming with you to help you um, set up the bridge and everything. Do you pay them, or are they along for the convention? Um, I don't pay them. Uh, the The understanding is that. Uh, the money that comes in goes towards uh, getting them to the cons, getting them into the cons. Uh, you know, their transportation and parking for their car are all taken care of. Uh, and they're not working the whole day. We have shifts where they can run off and attend a, attend a, um, a panel or browse the artist alley. So um, it's really to make sure that every time you go to a con, you're not spending your own money to work a con and that there's kind of a neutral there. So it's beneficial both ways. Do we have any final questions for Dave? What is your favorite station to play? Uh, Captain. I, like, I like the shuttle. Yeah, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I really am enjoying the shuttle right now. Let's see. At Amada 3, we had a screw-up with the fighters where we could launch, what, 60 missiles out of a fighter? Yeah, that was on the Brigantine, I believe, and the Avengers all had 63 homings each. That was freaking awesome just to watch all of them launch. <laughs> Oh, the lag. No, there was not. No, the lag. Are overpowered. 
it was a uh, it was a little bit of a bug uh, for that particular release at Armada. Well, hey, Dave, I want to say thank you for coming coming out tonight and putting this together and, and talking to us all about this. This is really cool. You're welcome. I'm glad to see so many people out on Discord this evening. There seems to be a question in chat. Uh, someone asks, as far as the bridge setup, what do you have? Just computers, fancy consoles? They'd like to try this, but they'd feel bad about it not being professional. So how do you make your bridge look professional? We run computers, laptops, with some computer monitors. We we bought little um, little seven inch com uh, mini computer tablets that act as our fighters. Um, but they're basically computers on a table, nothing fancy uh, beyond just <laughs> people sitting around a, a computer looking at a big screen. I think laying out the bridge is a very important uh, attraction too. And uh, of course, the uh, DMX lighting helps. Natural follow-up question. Explain DMX lighting. All oh, right. Um, DMX light is a, is a protocol used by um, by the lighting industry uh, to send signals based on what is happening on the bridge. So if you bring up the shields, then the lights turn a specific color and it illuminates the, the room or the bridge. Another thing that we found too, um, not necessarily at cons, but we have once a month uh, Artemis games, we call them duty shifts. And uh, we found that when we set up the DMX and we brought the big projector and everything, uh, people were intimidated and didn't want to sit in and play with us because the expectations of operating a you know, a pristine bridge was, was too much for them. So uh, what we did was we scaled back quite a bit. We got rid of the big projector. We used a big screen TV, similar to the picture that was just posted there. And uh, and just made sure that we were accessible when people came by at the game uh, cafe to say, hey, you know, you're welcome to sit in and play. So not making it too intimidating. DMX isn't too hard. Um, I just got done at least building the preliminary stages of mine. The, the biggest problem that I had was when I first wired it, I had switched... Uh, there's some power switch and I blew one of the controllers and I didn't reorder another one. But uh, with the help of uh, a friend of mine who's a computer tech and Mark Bell who does the DMX seminars at Armada, um, my lighting system is, is tentatively up and running. Yes. Uh, at Armada every year, there is a workshop slash panel on building your own DMX controller. Uh, you get to take that controller home with you uh, if you attend it. So uh, look for that, I believe, on the Armada website. The picture Baba just posted is a typical setup that we would have in a, at our, our, our monthly duty shift where it looks inviting uh, for people who are interested in the game. So it isn't over the top. So perhaps uh, one of your values is making, or sorry, one of your goals is making Artemis accessible uh, to the general uh, gaming club or community, for instance, as you're setting that up. I'm uh, posting the URL of uh, the First Light Division strategic plan for 2017.
this will give you an idea of how we've been managing for the year. We're, uh, we're coming up to the end. Uh, usually at the end of November, we do a, a wrap up review of the plan to make sure that uh, we've achieved, you know, at least half of our goals <laughs> and then start planning uh, for the 2018 season. I try to update this uh, PDF probably every quarter so that uh, it doesn't get too far behind. But it does show a, uh, a transparent uh, process on how we've been taking Artemis forward in one community, for instance. I haven't, I don't think I've updated it for the last two months. Any other questions? I want to thank everybody for, for taking time out of your busy schedules to come out and, and attend our presentation today. And Dave for putting it together. You're welcome. I'm uh, happy to see so many faces online and uh, I hope to keep playing with you guys uh, for the years to come because I really do enjoy this game. And I enjoy the people who come out and play it. Oh, here's a question. Uh, what kind of game do you usually run? Is it scripted? Is it GM? Is it random? Is it a uh, solo? What is it? Oh, uh, at our duty shifts, we start off with um, standard patrol mission into a, sometimes into a single front or a double front, depending who's there. It's very contextual. Uh, we have a lot of new people, then it won't be too difficult because we want to make sure that they get a chance to play uh, different stations. No, I'm sorry. I meant like at a public event, at a con or something. At a con, yes. The con is solely based on pilot uh, training pilots at the academy. So it's, uh, I would say it would be a GM game. It's really, we really just spend our time getting them oriented to the controls, flying, uh, forming up. And if the, if that crew is really, really good, then uh, we may send a, a Karelian, like we may say, we, we may take the, the carrier out to, you know, Alpha One and uh, engage a, a single Karelian with the fighters, for instance, and then bring them back. Uh, the, uh, a standard round would be about 15, 20 minutes at the most. And then we boot them off and we take the next group of people waiting in the briefing room. Um, yes, the attendees can request to be on any of the stations. Uh, I think Helm was the only one that we were hesitant on getting them on because uh, they could fly the, uh, the fighters. I guess my con days are more desperate. I end up teaching 10 year olds how to do the helm because that's all I have in the seat. That's right. Yeah. So the focus is really, uh, we, we basically are selling to the cons, getting people to play Artemis through uh, becoming fighter pilot, pilots through the academy. And that's usually would lead them on a career path of hopefully becoming an officer on the bridge. I'm not 10, I'm 11. <laughs> Better than the career path of a damn con member. Hashtag blood is coolant. I'm on... Uh... I'm on Discord, I think most nights, Monday to Wednesday. So, uh, you know, as time goes, you're all welcome to, to ask questions or 
just through general discussions. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook too. Okay, I'll keep the presentations media channel around for about a week. So if you want to pop in and ask a question or whatever here, we'll have it for a little bit. And then you can always ask on the lobby channel thereafter. Yeah, so uh, yeah, if you need to start setting up your, your values and all that, and I can always take a look at it uh, and we can have discussions around it. I'm more than happy to do that for your respective communities out there. Did you want to end the formally end the presentation there, Slate? It's probably time to formally end the, end the presentation. We can all hang out and socialize if you'd like, um, or we could, you know, potentially move down to a game channel and actually play a couple of games if we wanted to. Um, it's kind of what people would want to do. I'm good with either any option. Yeah, I'm up for a game or two, guys. Thanks, everyone. It was great sharing my Thanks, Dave. experience. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Terminating transmission. For those of you that 